So today I wanted to talk about my philosophy as an artist, and I think it's very similar to my philosophy as a tarot reader um, slash intuitive medium. Um, I've often felt like as a medium that I embody the force of art. Um, I don't necessarily produce art. I don't see myself as an artist as much as a channel for art to move through me. And um, I like to think of the materials that I use as um, play, you know, I'm, I'm playing. It's a process of playing and that the viewer is as much part of the art experience as the artist. So in other words, when the viewer is looking at a piece of art, their individual interpretation, subjective experience, filters, preferences, all of the things that they bring to their viewing experience shapes their subjective experience of the art. So in a way, they are co-creators of this art at least of their, their experience of the art. And so um, I am not one of those professional artists who gets down to business and, and suffers and works every day and disciplines myself to make art. I feel like that is a, um, a very unhappy way to be an artist. If you wanna be a professional and make a living at it, I think oftentimes that is the way you're going to have to do it and and it becomes an unpleasant experience but for me the joy of creating and the rush and the um, transcendent experience of playing with materials of trying new things of exploring is much more valuable than uh, any money that I could be making from art if I was to dedicate myself to a more rigorous and disciplined and painful and frustrating experience. And I, I'll just tell you, I've had that experience. Um, I've had experiences where I was commissioned to do art or, or I forced myself to work and I became very, very unhappy and dissatisfied. And my experience and having a, a positive experience as I do art is more valuable to me than the monetary gains of being a professional. So um, for me, it's more about the experience and the quality of the experience. And it's the same with tarot reading. Uh, when I say that the viewer um, brings, brings to and contributes to the experience as well. Um, when I'm doing a tarot reading, the person that I'm reading for brings their interpretation because they have all the backstory, all the wealth of, of what's going on. I don't know everything that's going on in their life. So I'm just, I just have the materials, my tarot deck. Um, it's also a tool to uh, facilitate um, cre creative interpretation. So I'm more of a translator. All right, so I'll, I'll say, okay, this card, what this card says to me and it, my experience, it means this, and I'll ask questions, and then the person I'm reading for will say, yes, this is true, or no, or kind of guide, and, and it's kind of a discussion, but it's a joint um, project. So I don't claim to be psychic in any way. Um, I'm just a facilitator of, of finding answers. And the tarot just kind of provides like fodder, kind of like the art materials that I use are just um, a medium of exploration. And then we go together, um, the re me the reader and the person I'm reading for, same with the art me as the artist and the viewer, we together 
create something that has meaning. So we use our imaginations, we use the meaning-making function of our minds and create meaning that's personal to us, that gives value to us. And um, yeah, I think that the, um, the value of the experience, um, you know, for me, when I'm, when I'm doing a painting, I'll play music and there've been some very profound experiences where I'm painting and um, a particular song will almost instruct me on how to paint. The way the music flows is kind of telling my hand, you know, move in this direction and and then I just kind of go with it and see what happens. And I have to give credit to an art teacher. Um, I took a class a semester at um, Utah Valley University and the art teacher um, completely reversed my process and it became much more joyful and open-ended and free-flowing because of her influence. So it used to be that I would start out with an objective in mind, like this is how I envision it, this is what I want it to be, and then inevitably I would be very, very frustrated when I couldn't create what I envisioned. Um, and then her process that she introduced was like, here's a bunch of materials. Now just start doing something. Just start making marks and then go further with it and play with it and see if you can make something interesting and see if you can make something that feels complete. And we would do these critiques in class where we would say, look at each other's pieces and say, is it complete? What does it need? You know, does it need a little more black? Does it need a little, little more space? Does it need something in this area? Um, my professor also introduced me to other types of media, like collage, you know, and inks and chalks. And um, it just opened up the possibilities for me and having a more fun and playful philosophy of art. Like, maybe there's no right and wrong in art. And maybe it's the experience of creating art that is valuable you know i mean you produce something in the end that's lasting hopefully that other people can appreciate hopefully um but even just the experience from start to finish of creating art can be valuable to you as an artist even for um healing you know for your own personal healing if you can just kind of get away into a um fantasy world where there's no expectations, there's no right or wrong, there's no social rules. You just make something. And that's so freeing, freeing to your mind and to your spirit. Um, so now I'm gonna show you a few things that I've just done in the last couple of days. I wanna say my process as an artist has changed from being a representational painter, um, meaning painting things that you can see and identify like faces and figures. Oh, I love faces and figures so much. It was also very frustrating when I could not or did not develop the skill to do it as accurately as I wanted. Um, and that frustration just kind of, kind of ruined the experience for me. I, I did not want to waste time just getting mired in frustration all the time. So while it can be rewarding to render, you know, something that looks real, um, the pressure and the perfectionism was very unpleasant for me. Um, so I, I switched from representational art to more abstract art, which is open-ended, which is whatever you want it to be, which is just freeing and the freedom of um, a method of expression. So. Um, in abstract art, I can explore concepts like transparencies, um, juxtaposing light and dark, you know, values, exploring values, exploring shapes, exploring line, exploring movement, exploring all the elements of art and playing with them, um, playing with color combinations, you know. If I get a certain obsession of a color in mind, I can play with that. I can um, delve into those realms and um, like lately I've really been into um, fluorescence
and exploring fluorescence. So I got some paints and here's one that I did fairly recently within the last couple of weeks. And this has a fluorescent um, yellow in it and there's some spots where I've added it but it was like mainly uh, gray in the background with these kind of cloud-like structures and then these you know laser sharp beams and playing with transparency because there's layers here and playing with fluorescence versus like a dull you know like a very bright sharp color versus a dull um, background color so that was fun to play with and then here's another one I did this is also um, using fluorescent paint, the pink. Um, compare, you know, contrasted with a matte gray. And this one, I was playing with shapes, kind of cloud, cloud-like um, shapes, the concept of clouds. And also what this made me think of was um, like, this is almost like the gray is a film, the film of our socialization and social man-made concepts with tears in it where you can see through it into the idealism that we, we hold, the idealism that we have in our minds. Like we want to, we want to see certain improvements in the world, we want to see certain improvements in our lives but um, we're kind of held in by this gray, you know, this is the status quo, but through the tears in it, with our imagination, we can see brighter possibilities. Another piece I did recently is this one, and I really love the look of ripples on water, so that's what this kind of represents. But I also love the way that, um, like the tide, can leave these ripples on the surface of the sand that look very similar to ripples on sand in the desert, which also looks similar to ripples in um, clouds. So there's this repetition of air and water flow that leave beautiful patterns in clouds and sand and on the beach. So my approach with art is um, I come in with a sense of curiosity and playfulness and maybe one or two different concepts that I want to experiment with. Like I said, um, transparency versus opacity, you know, opaqueness, or um, fluorescence versus like a more dull pigment. So I was purposely choosing gray to contrast with fluorescent yellow and also um, a gradient from this fluorescent yellow to this like aqua blue. Here's another piece I did recently, and this was really more about a celebration of those little bristle marks you can get with um, brushes. Um, like you get hair-like effects with all the little bristle, bristle hairs um, and repetition of patterns and kind of like a smoky pattern of lines. And these were just pleasing colors for me. I wanted a lot of white space, a lot of openness and airiness, and then these nice uh, meditative blues, deep blues, and this nice cyan kind of blue. Um, and if you looked closely, there is tiny parts with um, little fluorescent yellow in them. I don't know if you can see. Um, but this is kind of more calligraphic, like calligraphy brushes. I love, love the little parallel lines that um, bristle hairs make and leave. Um, I also really love the tactile quality of, of handmade art and preserving the artisan experience with the technology that we have of digital art and create you know computer created art while I really appreciate and admire the skill that um, digital artists have 
in mastering their craft. I love to have tools, you know, and do things by hand um, and preserving the physical aspect of the creative process. And so I love having brushes and paints and the smells and the textures and everything that goes into creating it and having um, the physical experience of all of it. Um, like I love walking through art supply stores and just kind of lusting after these different colors and these different tools and oh, what could I make with that? Um, I'll go through a couple other things that um, I've made recently. Um, but I, I really like to go in with um, an open-minded and open-ended sense of curiosity. Like, could I take these few colors and make something that's interesting or pleasing or satisfying. Um, so here's an example of that. These two pieces I made at the same time. And one is an eye and one is a mouth, if you can tell. Um, but they use the same four colors, uh, fluorescent yellow, uh, more like a Naples yellow, and then a dark blue and a medium blue and I was just sort of I love eyes I think a lot of artists love eyes and I love mouths I love the um, sensations that I can get and have through my mouth and lips so I, I love painting those things um, and I love for my art to be provocative and not in a sexual sense but in uh, like can I prompt the viewer to ask questions or to think in a slightly different way or to, um, yeah, think in a way that they never have before, um, alter perceptions and open up possibilities. And now I'm just going to share a few um, things in my sketchbook that I've done. So this is when I don't have a project in mind or if I don't have um, canvases, that's the thing. Like if you want to give me anything, give me art supplies, especially canvases. Um, when I don't have any white canvases, blank canvases, um, I'll just paint on whatever I have. And so here's one that I did. I was just working on uh, washes of color gradients and gradients from this fluorescent yellow at the bottom to a green to a pale blue medium and dark blue and then on top of that I just doodled like a tree grass sky and some little birds and then um, the next day I was inspired to do a bunch of eyes but I was trying to abstract and simplify the shape of the eye to more of a symbol and I was making these trapezoid shapes with uh, square <laughs> irises and they ended up looking kind of like insects with these legs coming out in all directions which are eyelashes and then the background colors I just thought well, you know what if it's often a question of what if what if I just play with these colors and, and see what effect I can make and see if it's interesting, see if it's satisfying, see if it's provocative, see if it um, makes any kind of statement or prompts any kind of thoughts or emotions or sensations. And this to me um, kind of reminds me of like the experience of um, getting haters, like having all their different opinions and it's just been interesting to me I, I can remove myself from it and not take it personally and look at it kind of in a more objective or overall sense uh, of what's going on but yeah that's all the different eyes and these these deeper colors you know kind of evokes this you know what it's like to have haters <laughs> and then this one um, this one kind of reminds me of like the graphic print um, designs of Diane von Furstenberg. I love her work. I consider her an artist in textiles 
and she's definitely um, made her mark and left a legacy and I have several of her I'd say pieces but uh, her dresses and outfits and so this one it also reminds me of kind of like tiles like a roof roof tiles um, but it was just meditative, you know, it's meditative to go through the process of painting and making patterns, repetitive marks. So that's just some of my art um, lately. And thank you for listening to me and, and thank you for watching. And I'm going to go put this little buddy down. He is definitely asleep. All right. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what your philosophy of art is and what type of art you appreciate and what inspires you and how you make art and what what gets you going. Um, I will say that I'm the type of artist that creativity is kind of like uh, being a surfer on the ocean or a body surfer on the, on the ocean. When the wave hits, or the wave of creativity comes, you just ride the wave, kind of like my video on bipolar. Um, when the mania or the depression hits, you just ride the wave and ride it out. And then when it's gone, you don't, <laughs> you don't do it. So I just, I'm much more passive. I'm a much more like yin type of artist. I am not aggressive. I'm not um, pursuing, I let it move through me. And it does, it builds up, like inspiration builds up to a point where I produce a lot of art very quickly and um, produce a lot of work. And it's a joyful, transcendent um, experience for me. And then it's gone and I don't produce. And if I try to force it, I, I become very unhappy. So that's my process as an artist. Okay, thank you very much for watching.